All right. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Bradley Butler. I am the executive director and curator at Main Street Arts in Clifton Springs, New York. Uh, thank you for joining us for this discussion with the artists uh, included in our exhibition, Six Painters. Uh, the goal with putting this invitational group exhibition together was to take a pulse on what we feel is very interesting painting happening in our region of upstate New York. Uh, artwork included showcases the surreal, the serene, and the sublime through the medium of painting. Um, the exhibition will run through September 1st, 2022, and gallery hours are Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, and then Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, exhibition programming at Main Street Arts is made possible in part by the New York State Council on the Arts. Uh, also, as always, Main Street Arts exhibitions are a group effort, and I'd like to thank Sarah Butler, my wife and co-director at Main Street Arts, uh, and Kaylee Mulberry, office and gallery assistant, uh, for making this exhibition come together. Uh, also, a special thank you to our summer intern, Kristen Ketchum, who finishes up, finishes up her internship uh, later this week as she heads back to college. Um, so before we um, get into uh, meeting all the artists and hearing from them, I'm just going to share a few images here with you uh, of the exhibition in case uh, you're sitting at home watching this and have not had the opportunity to, to see the show in person. Uh, definitely encourage you, if you can, to come in and see the show in person for sure. Uh, very vibrant, colorful show um, and a lot of great text around these paintings, which are great to see in person. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of installation shots here. And uh, the group of artists that we're going to hear from. Um, we have, um, so tonight I'm joined by uh, Deshaun Aubrey. Um, and Rebecca Soriano and Cliff One, uh, each from Rochester, New York. Also joined by Suzanne Anandera from Ithaca, New York, and Poleshensky from Palmyra, New York, and Susan Stewart from Albany, New York. So I just shared uh, one image each uh, from each of them, just so you can get a sense of. Um, the kind of variety of work that's in the show and get a sense of, of uh, each of their styles before we kind of get into to talking about their work. And uh, if anyone has questions as we're going along here, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments and uh, we will ask them uh, accordingly to uh, the participants of the talk. Uh, so um, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and start talking with the artists. Uh, so Deshaun, uh, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about some of your background or your approach to painting? Just kind of introduce yourself. Sure, I can try to get into that. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Bradley, I would like to say thank you for the incredible opportunity to showcase alongside some amazing artists. Um, and then also I would like to give a special thanks to the artists. Uh, man, uh, I don't even know what to expect. When I dropped off my artwork to the gallery, Bradley did give me a little sneak peek and uh, man, I was, I was blown away. Um, so hello everyone, my name is Deshaun Aubrey, abstract expressionist painter based in Rochester, New York. Uh, hmm, the background is interesting. I feel like that question is always a little too hard to, to answer. Uh, it's not specific enough, but I will say that uh, my entry into painting came about when I felt like poetry wasn't enough. Um, I did poetry a lot uh, up in high school, uh, up, probably up until the 12th grade, right, the time, right before the time of graduation. Um, and then I headed off to college when I was picking up college. And, but I was skipping a lot of those courses to go to uh, the art history class. So that was kind of my introduction to, to painting. Um, uh, so I guess, I guess my approach to painting, I guess, Specifically, the least painting that you see here in the show. Um, here in the show. Uh, uh, Deshaun, Desha I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, sounds like, I don't know if you're not sure you may be covering up your microphone. Oh, is, is this better? That's much better. Yep. Oh, God. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, should I start over? <laughs> uh, it was just the last minute. I was trying to make sure it wasn't okay, okay. on my end. So sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, specifically, what you see with these paintings here. I think the paintings that came before that, I was I was focused on some sort of metaphorical meaning. 
But with these works here, I just wanted to focus on the interaction uh, with the materials, which is jute or burlap, uh, better known as burlap. Um, and I just, I didn't really want to have any, any deep meaning behind these paintings. I just wanted to, to let the colors be displayed in their own. And uh, I guess there's, I guess you consider that there's some sort of lyricism with the lines and the fields that, uh, that are included in these works. Um, but, you know, my, my approach to these, I didn't, I don't want to say there was this idea of minimalism, but I can say that there's an idea of minimalism when it comes to the, the process and the, the meaning of them. Um, so uh, I don't really have much to say about these works. Um, they, they were created, I would say they, they were made, if, if we want to go back to last year, 2021, I think the earliest one came about in May and then spanning the whole, uh, the whole summer of last year. Um, yeah, I think it'll be easier for me to explain with, with some questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we'll go in and um, have some more pointed uh, questions about, about the process and stuff like that too, so, but thank you very much. Of course. Um, so uh, next we'll go to uh, Re Rebecca. Hello. Hi, am I unmuted? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so sorry. Uh, so I um, studied fine art, printmaking, painting. Um, I sort of bounced around in college a lot and I'm still currently bouncing around a little bit. Um, but I mostly focused, um, you know, I spend a lot of my time <laughs> doing isolated work. Um, and I, background wise, you know, I'm, I was born in the Philippines, then raised in the States um, from when I was pretty young, like four, up until, well, till now. Um, and yeah, I like, grew up in a family of kind of creatives, but mostly photographers. Um, and so I found painting when I was younger, but then started really kind of taking it more seriously in the last 10 years or so. Um, and then in the last two years, like really kind of trying to find my footing more. Um, you know, and a lot of my work is very introspective. Uh, I, want to kind of explore, uh, I think about identity a lot, obviously, you know, feeling sort of like misplaced or like that you have citizenship, but you don't really know where you belong kind of feeling. Um, that's kind of always been a bit of a mixed mystery for me, like a sense of like self exploring things like that. And then kind of getting away from just doing strictly portraiture or fracture and portraiture by, um, I really love still life painting and I like exploring like these connections that we can make between um, memory and inanimate objects. <laughs> um, that's kind of, it, it, you know, what one object means to somebody, uh, can mean something totally different, but the actual object hasn't changed at all. It's it's just, it is, but we as people like place importance on things. And just, I find the way to like mix those together in a piece um, that kind of like motivates my work. Great, well, thank you, Rebecca. Um, and uh, next, uh, we'll st we're, we're going in order here. Uh, we're sticking in Rochester for right now. So uh, Cliff, you're, you're up. Hi, uh, Clifford One. I think Deshaun did an amazing job of thanking everybody, and I, I second that. So I'm just going to move on. Um, I was born in Hong Kong, and my family emigrated to America uh, really early. So I was only about two years old. 
but we grew up really poor and um, in a time period where it was only a few years after the Jim Crow laws stopped. And so there was so much racism and it really affected my life. And also just the whole process of my parents working all these different jobs. My father actually um, became or, you know, was studying to be and became a, a researcher and actually worked at the Pasteur Institute and became a college professor. But years before that, he worked restaurants and my mother did too. And he just gave this talk to, to my um, daughter because she was just putting stuff together about the family of how he drove almost, um, he worked 18 hour days and just drove to three different places just to get by. And I just remember having, um, like I wanted this toy. It was a Dr. Steel doll. It was bald headed with a dragon and, and had muscles. I don't know how much it affected my life, but um, he came home one day after going to work and they told us we couldn't have it. And after a week he came home and he asked my brother if it was okay to, for him to give me the toy. And I said, uh, and my brother said, yes. So he said, you know, your brother really wants this. I will get you one next time. And what he did was he used his lunch money from those long days and saved it for the whole week just to get me a toy. And I just remember that level of generosity, but also them being out of the house. And so um, we finally moved somewhere and my dad thought I was gonna become a doctor. I was in like, um, you know, like AP bio when I was a junior. And all of a sudden people were talking about going to art school and I didn't know that was a thing. So I, and really it was naivety. I talked to my art teacher and she actually didn't really believe in me because I was a little bit of a troublemaker. And I said, uh, I said, I heard RISD is a good school. She goes, yes, Cliff. So I told my mom I had to take off two weeks from school because they, they asked for 20 pieces and I made a piece a day. I decided 14 pieces was good enough. This is totally out of my mind. I don't even know like why I'm lucky, but I applied with that and I actually got in and I decided I'll be an illustrator. That's how I make money. So I, this is a kind of a long journey, but I went out into the world and illustrated. And when I was doing my illustration, number one, I didn't like the stuff I was doing, but also in this company that I was with, all my friends were using their own images in the illustrations. So I did that one day. I just thought I'll put myself in illustration. And the art director came up to me and said, Cliff, you can't do that. And I was like, Rocky did it. And they're like, yeah, but Rocky's white. And I realized in advertising, and especially then in the 80s, you couldn't have a woman or uh, a person of color in front of those images. The normal person that everybody's buying was the average white person that was there who was really handsome. And unless they're marketing specifically to those other uh, images. So I left that whole process, went to New York City, ended up being a bartender at Studio 54. If you're young, you have no idea what that means. If you're older, it's super cool. And um, when I finally was just making money and sitting there, I thought, you know what? I actually want to do artwork. And I guess I've always wanted to be a painter. And living in New York City, it was amazing. Like I went into the Met one day on my way into work and I saw this Van Gogh show and it stunned me. I, like I couldn't even breathe right, you know, to see it in person. So anyways, that whole long journey, I uh, went back home to my father's house, lived in his basement, which totally made him sad. Like his, I was like, dad, can I come live in your basement and paint a portfolio? And he was like, yes. And so that actually led to me getting a full uh, uh, fellowship. And I went to MICA and I studied and I just started doing artwork and I sold out my uh, uh, graduate show. Um, like all my graduate work sold out. So I actually kind of started my journey here. And so I've been a professor at, Micah and the Corcoran in DC. And I finally came here to RIT and I really love teaching and expressing myself that way. But that journey of really having uh, the ability to have an intellectually, uh, you know, retrospective life of sitting in the studio and really like going with their thoughts. And I'll leave it with this. And I know I'm saying a lot, but there's a quote from Pablo Neruda I love. And if, if you love poetry and you read Pablo Neruda, he's amazing. But he said, to know the intimacy of brothers is a marvelous thing in life. To know the love of those whom you love is a fire that feeds your life. But to know the affection of those unknown to you who watch over your sleep and your, your weaknesses is still a greater, more beautiful thing because it widens up the boundaries of your being and unites all living things. And I think art really does that. Like I'm getting shaky in my voice just talking about that. Anyways, uh, my work now is just about um, the all that all that turmoil, the concepts of being Asian American in, in this culture. And I'm just trying to like, kind of put my thoughts and feelings out there and hopefully somebody connects to it. Thanks. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Cliff. Um, 
well, we'll get, yeah, we'll get into all the other, we'll get into everything else as we move along, um, but thank you. Um, and uh, Suzanne, uh, can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, thanks, Brad. Thanks, Main Street Arts and all these artists. It's really been a pleasure. Um, I was born in Berkeley, California, and um, I now live in Ithaca, New York. Um, and I attended the School of the Art Institute in Chicago, as well as the California College of the Arts in Oakland, California. Um, I was exposed to art very, very young. Um, my mom was a single, um, and I couldn't think of okay. really anything else I wanted to do. But paint and um so here is i about my process that's in the show at main street is small to medium size um but i really like the process of painting um i love materials um and i love the tradition of painting and the history of painting i think is what keeps me motivated um when i was in college i originally um, started as a scientific illustration major and then I, I realized quickly that the painters had much more to say and they had better parties. So I started hanging out with the painters and um, just learned a lot more about materials and history. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I ch chose that path. Um, so I don't teach. Um, I, I have taught um, individuals and children, um, mostly at-risk youth in the past. Um, and I don't know, Brad, what else am I supposed to cover here? <laughs> well, I think you're, you're covering uh, just, just what you're supposed to. I think we okay. lost a little bit of your background, um, like talking about your childhood a little bit, I think. Okay. Uh, your, that kind of went a little choppy. So if you would just want to circle back okay. around to that. Okay. Then... Yeah. Um, so how I was interested in art was um, my mom took us to museums a lot when we were kids. Um, and that really, I think, was um, a big eye opener for me. Um, and after college, I drove a forklift for a while. And then I ended up working um, in the game industry, creating um, 2D and 3D worlds, um, fantasy, sci-fi worlds, um, which I think definitely influences my work now. Um, I love um, the sort of non-descriptive landscapes that just exist in one's mind. Um, and I, I love film. I love um, writers and painters who are really in touch and skilled in their craft. Um, but yeah, I think the science fiction fantasy world um, has had a big influence on my work. Great. Thanks for that. Thanks. Susan. Susan. There's a Susan. Okay, we got a Susan. Susan. A Suzanne and an Anne in the show. So that was my first slip up of the evening. Let's hope that's my last. So thank you, Suzanne. Um, uh, so uh, next we'll hear from Anne uh, in Palmyra. Can you hear me? Yes. Now you can. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Main Street Arts. Um, it's been great being in this show. And um, I went to college at Plattsburgh State University. Um, I wanted to get as far away from home as possible, um, which was as far away from Syracuse. And um, that college is above the Adirondacks, um, about five hours away. And after college, I went to New York City where I lived for 20 years. Um, I went to get my MFA at Hunter College in New York. And there I concentrated in combined media. And I think my love of materials is really where my work is, um, kind of where my work is now. Um, in undergrad, I did a concentration in painting and printmaking. 
But in between um, undergrad and graduate school, I made paper sculptures and made like cast paper sculptures and they were larger than life size and made um, like large installation sculptures with um, cast paper and I started painting again and I started falling in love with gouache and I would make these huge sculptures with gouache paint. Um, which was really strange because I used gouache like acrylic paint. Um, and then I started making miniature size paintings out of um, graduate school. And I work in mostly series. Um, so I'll work on a series for five, seven years. And in the past five years, I've been working with plants. Um, I love them. I grow my own plants and that's where I am now. I've been growing plants and making paintings and cut out collages of them. Great. Thank you, Anne. You're welcome. Uh, and then um, next, uh, Susan. Hello, thank you so much, Aunt Brad. It's, it's been an honor to be part of this. Um, and so um, just uh, thank you. Um, I People have given a little bit of the background and, and, and touched on their schools. Um, I, um, when we were in public school, I, I grew up in Massachusetts and we didn't have art in the public schools. However, we did have it in junior high for you know seventh grade and eighth grade. But when I, um, when I was small, uh, my parents lived with my grandparents. This is following World War II, and which my father was in World War II. So I, um, my, my grandmother used to draw. And so I remember being three years old and, and taking her little portfolio of pencil drawings and just copying them. And then that graduated to she would put an African violet, a real plant on they'd given me a little a little paint box with with, with oil with um watercolors and she'd let she'd place the plant um on the table and so the whole idea of just drawing and, and painting was just i just thought that's what everybody did and then um for for college my brother my older brother had gone was going to syracuse and so um he was four years older than i was so that's how i was introduced to it and um, I applied to their art school. Uh, again, I just did drawings of my, I did pastel drawings of my friends and, and that was my portfolio. Um, anyway, when I got into art school, what I, um, what was, what was <laughs> interesting and had its effect. Um, number one, um, junior year, I went, um, I did semester abroad in, in, in Florence and I was just um, brought to my knees um, by the beauty of the art, the Renaissance art in the um, cathedrals. And I can, I'm emotional about it because it was so um, just awe inspiring to me, both the architecture and, and the painting. And I realized it wasn't just, it wasn't the biblical stories per se, it was the artwork itself, the, the mastery of it. And um, I just, so I've carried that ever since. And, and, and yes, the spirituality um, I certainly um, has its impact, um, has always had this impact on me. Um, the other thing I have to say about going to college for, an, for a woman going to art school at this time in, this, in, the, in the 1960s is we were also told um, they took all the women um, going into the into the, well, actually they were sophomores and we were told specifically for women, if you plan to get a job, which I did, I, I always thought I was supposed to work and have a day job. Um, the only thing that you can plan on getting a job in is teaching and advertising. Don't even think of going into advertising because they'll take the mail. So um, it's also interesting how um, our times have, you know, affect everybody, you know, in terms of um, the race or their, their, their sex or whatever. Um, and then, however, the other good thing though from Syracuse was they also, within their art ed program, it was a minimal of education courses and their philosophy was um, to, to make yourself the strongest artist you can because you were an artist first. 
and then you're an educator. And so I was always thankful for that. So the idea of doing your art while you're the teacher, while you're teaching, that's what I did. And that's what I, um, they instructed you, you to do. And when I student taught, I student taught in the high school situation and the, the teacher was a, um, was a sculptor and he brought his work right into class. And again, he was, there was a terrific role model um, as I went on to teach public school for, for 32 years. Um, I stayed in upstate, I stayed in New York State and married. And um, as I started doing my own art um, following graduate school, I tried different sub, I, in, my, in graduate school, my artwork was, was non-objective. And I, I just, when I finished that program, it was a master's because we didn't, um, it was a master's, master in arts program. Um, when I finished that, I just wanted to try different subjects. I wanted to try something more figurative. And I started with, with dogs. Um, I tried to paint my husband and he didn't, he refused to pose. He didn't want anything to do with that. So my dog was very willing. And so I, I did paintings of dogs. They were large. And then um, I was fine with that. And then once my dog died, I didn't, we did replace him, but I didn't want to do paintings of puppies. So I started doing other dogs and I started doing architecture. Um, and what I, so I would kind of flip off and on, like do a dog and then do something, do something architectural, do a dog, do something architectural. And it, this kind of followed the rhythm of a school year. You're, you're teaching and you're painting during the night and vacations, et cetera, et cetera. And so I would really plan paintings Annual, you know, an annual painting. Um, and um, again, because the scale was large, it would, could take me a year to do a painting or two. And so I would flip flop with subject matter. And um, then I, because I could get into shows uh, more successfully with architecture, I, I started to, to be more directed with that. Um, and um, finally, um, as I worked with the architecture, I then started with distortion in architecture. Oh, and, and, and I ended up doing construction sites and, um, and then distortion. And um, I, on, this, on the side, I had a, a more of an abstract architectural series. It was with smaller works like 22 by 22. And they were fun and, and as I said, more abstract. And, and it was a nice, it was a nice respite from the architectural imagery where you had to pay attention to, to the image so that it would still look like it was the what, as it was your subject that, that you wanted it to be. And um, specifically related to the works that are in your that are in the uh, Main Street Art Show. Um, it was three years ago, four years ago, that um, I a friend of mine um, in, who's an artist. Um, suggested that we participate in a, um, uh, in a program by um, a local art center. And it was the um, critical form program, which was sponsored by the New York Foundation of the Arts. And um, so they selected 10 artists in the area. And for basically a year, it included some critiques and they brought you to New, to New York and, and you met some gallery directors and so forth. So I thought, well, this would be a great time to try something new. <laughs> Or, or, or take my take my abstraction um, that still had architectural components to it to take it further to do something more with it. So um, the result is the work that's in um, this show, Six Painters, and um, so that's my introduction to what to what's on the, in the show. Great. <clears throat> well, thank you, Susan. Thank you, everyone, um, for your little bit of background information. Um, and I'll just say after each of you. We're talking, I was like, I wanted to start a discussion about one or two things that you each touched on. And it was just, um, so it's, it's just great that already there's so many things to talk about. But I think the, the thing that's, well, there's a couple of things that are um, kind of across the board, everyone kind of touched on a little bit, but one thing that came up and I think is a good starting point into kind of a, a discussion is um, uh, emotion and connection with, you know, with that's kind of, what we look at in our own work, you know, as painters, um, and also what we hope people will get from the work itself. Also our connection to this bigger thing of, you know, not like the art world, but just like the making of artwork. 
um, it's just a really interesting thing, which is very different from, you know, many other professions, not painting, but just the arts, you know, I mean, if we think about um, all the things you could do for, you know, a living, um, there are, there's emotion involved, but I think on a very deep, intimate level, and especially with painting, uh, and I say this as a painter myself, there is this kind of deep emotional connection that you have with what you're doing because it's so personal. And I think that everyone here um, has that kind of intimate, introspective. I mean, that was the word that multiple people use. Um, so I don't know if, if anyone wants to chime in about that or or we can go to another question first, but um, I just thought that was a really interesting starting point. Well, I just want to say one thing about the I, how important painting is, and and to um, to me personally, just as you pointed out, and with everybody else in the in this show, um, this was again. I was teaching, so I was working during the day, and I was I actually tried giving up painting for one year because I thought I'd save so much money, and I my my house would be so clean because I wasn't painting, and and that I would you know. My husband would love me better and all this stupid stuff. The upshot is I was miserable. Mm. So from that point on, it was a, it was a, it was not an issue ever again. You know, there was no question. I was just going to keep doing it. And I've told my husband time and again, you know, I'm going to do this till I die. You know, just get, just understand. That's all. So um, I'll add that to the, to the idea, to the talk. That's an even better way to. That's a better way to frame that. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone want to comment on or follow up on that? Yeah, just just to add to that, what you were saying, uh, iPad. Um, yeah, I, I haven't painted since February, and uh, like you were saying, like that that this sort of forced hiatus is is tormenting because. You know, I feel like that's one of the main ways to, to get out what you feel, what you want to say, what you've been going through. Um, and, and I guess in between, I, I tried to pick up for, uh, photography and, you know, that, that works a little bit, but I don't think anything scratches the itch quite like drawing or painting does. Um, and, you know, the importance of art, I don't really know how to go further with that, but, you know, looking around, there's art everywhere. Even when you look at you know look at something as simple as like a water bottle, like this this was crafted for its perfect its purpose, and then it's given this cool color. So, the I think I think one of the most important aspects of life is art, and I think I don't think that we should. I mean, it, it's probably healthy to, to take those long pauses or those forced breaks, but it's nothing. There's nothing like you know what it is when you're actually in the process of doing something. Uh, so, but when you get back into it, that's the, everything, it feels like everything is easier for you. Life becomes easier. Yeah. And I think that, I think in itself, art makes life a little bit easier. You know, you know, if we, if we look at like the grand scheme of things coming from work and working with people and being out in the world, worrying about bills, this, that, and third, I think that art, you know, eases some, some of that pain. And I'll leave on that. You know, just following up on that, I think, one of the things that I actually tell the students and, you know, like a lot of this is just like talks that I, I have there, but I was talking one day and I said, you know, I hope, and I really believe this, I hope the most beautiful thing you ever see is another human being, because that's going to make your life so fulfilled. I mean, wh whether it's somebody that you love that you're going to spend the rest of your life with or time with, or if you have a child and you hold them in your hand. And I just hope that like, that is actually the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. But when I went into that Van Gogh show, I was talking about the, the, the stunning moment. Like I saw his stuff in reproduction before people were talking about it. I'm like, whatever, you know, like a guy with one ear. And then I saw the, like his show at Arles from Arles, like those last years in Arles at the Met. And I couldn't breathe right. But it, what it was, was it wasn't just the work itself or the paint. And it was all that. It was just stunning. And But the thing is, you have to learn to read it, too. It's like a vocabulary. It's like when you read a novel, you have to learn vocabulary and words. And it's your responsibility. But what really got me was I actually knew him for a moment. And so many times when I look at artists 
And later I just go in there, but this happens with music, which is art and poetry, anything like that. And even the objects around us, you know, like interior designers, industrial designers, it's this thing in quality of life where you know another human being. And this is, I'll just end it with this, but Agnes Martin said this. she said, remember when you're inspired or you're inspiring somebody else, it's not just you, it's a connection between you and them. They have to have it in them to be inspired. And if you're inspired by somebody else, don't just put it all on them. You have to have it in you. It's this connection with human beings again. And so that beauty that you have, that kind of lasts, and that's all about somebody's soul. It's the other way of reaching that, you know? And I think that's a stunning thing. Yeah, you're so true. So true. I just want to say that um, you guys are so elegant. then I think I lost you for a second. Yep, uh, I think uh, Suzanne, your internet uh, has been a little troublesome. Again. But, you know, and, and it's actually sure. these pieces, what, just like you can see this, what, am I muted? No, no I was just, your internet was choppy again and uh, it, it went out. I think, I think we have. Yeah, um, yeah go ahead. Just that, just that you're looking at, I think, I think I, I lost. <laughs> Sorry. It, go, it goes in spurts. We have you uh, very, very clear and then we don't, but uh, go ahead and, and try, try one more time here. I think the times when I'm painting in the studio is when I feel the most alive and most in touch with you know, the soul of who I am. And when you go to a museum or when you see a painting or you meet a painter who's really in touch with that soul. Um, it, it brings you to your knees, you know, when you're from the masters, I don't, it could be as as your mind. And I think that's really inspiring to me. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, I think that at least for me, I don't paint with the intention of like connecting with another person, but I always find it very interesting, like who these things that are very personal for me resonate with. And like, then that kind of brings about this like unexpected conversation. Um, which is always a surprise for somebody who is not great socially, but sort of like without trying, you can like find all these interesting ways of uh, reaching other people, um, which I think is a great part of painting, even like like what, what Cliff was saying and uh, everybody else, like people that you'll never meet because they're gone. Um, there's still something left behind that you can like find like a commonality with or find inspiration from. Yeah, and it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, you, you bring up a good point, uh, Rebecca, because I think in order to be the kind of person that will have the ability to connect to another human being like that on a deep level, you have to also be this introspective person and um, you know, connecting with a lot of people and being this very sensitive, introspective person don't always kind of go side by side. So it's a really interesting dynamic, I think, that um, in order to be able to do that, you also have to be what you would expect to be the opposite, you know, kind of person. So it's, it's just a really interesting dynamic for sure. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting um, connection between everyone is that a lot of people mentioned you know, different things that they did prior to painting or different things they tried or things that led you to painting. And I know that that's, you know, similar for myself. I've, I've tried a lot of different things. Um, I mean, obviously I have the role here at Main Street Arts too, um, which is very connected to things surrounding painting. Um, but it, it's just, uh, does anyone have any interesting, I know Cliff has many interesting stories about uh, various things. Uh, does anyone have interesting stories to share about um, you know, kind of what really led them to painting specifically or where they were prior to uh, 
to painting? Yeah, I, I think I can go back to, to what I was saying in my introduction, uh, being in, in audible, being that I was, I was in college uh, studying biology because I was interested in becoming an orthodontist. Um, that all went out the window when I picked up a, a sculpture class. And then uh, a good friend of mine from high school, we also, you know, he also came to the same college that I attended to. Um, and he was taking some art history courses. And I noticed myself, I, I, I began to skip, you know, some of the main courses for the biology lessons. And I was like, I don't, I don't really want to go there today. But I, I'll stick my head in this art history class and get some of this knowledge. And I'll take down some of the artists. Uh, and I think one of the one of the, the, the bigger artists that uh, I came across was Peter Paul Rubens, who's a really great master painter. Um, and you know, I, I've always been interested in this idea of creation, whether it be through fashion or painting or sculpture or you know whatever the case may be, anything that has to do with creating something. Uh, um, but you know that 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 taste and that tease from those, those art history, like those courses. I was like, I think that this is the thing that I want to do. Uh, uh, and, and surprisingly, I didn't, I didn't end up switching majors. I just ended up dropping out and, uh, you know, figured it out on my own. Um, so I guess that's kind of like my weird little story, how I was brought to, you know, being a painter. Um, and man, ever since then, it's just like, it, it's just, it's introduced me to so many people and it's become, uh, a diary for me. Any, anyone else want to uh, touch on touch on that a little bit more? Or? All right, then um, <clears throat> I think uh, the other thing that I really want to kind of know about from people is, um, you know, ideas. Like where where do they come from for you? I mean, everyone is doing something very different in this exhibition. Um, obviously, style is very different. Um, I mean, there's great overlaps between you, you know, various color palettes or different things uh, which kind of relate. But everyone has very different things they're interested in uh, through their work. So I don't know if anyone has anything to share about like where do the ideas for this specific work come from? Whether they're very abstract things that seemingly don't relate to what we see on the wall or whether they're, this is the exact story that I'm trying to tell with my word. Okay, so I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> don't, don't fight it, don't fight it. Um, you know, I think for me, a lot of my work was therapy when I was younger, right? Like you have all this stuff going on inside and you know, like you have other people there, but really there was like so much pain in the beginning that I just kind of wanted to put it out in some way or talk about it and talk about it in a way that maybe somebody would get me, you know, like that whole thing. Like I, I like uh, Susan, what you said about like, maybe people would like your husband would love you more if you didn't paint. I actually thought maybe people would love me more if I had my paintings out there and they could see who I was. And so then I just started pouring out these ideas and it was really reactions to things. So my early stuff that was allegorical because people said I couldn't make myself I started trying to paint myself and I made myself cadmium yellow deep, you know? And everybody said that like, like, you know, like Chinese people, like Asians were yellow. And I actually liked to change it to the, we're the golden people, you know? But I would just like bring up these things and I would just put it in there and make symbols that I thought were kind of great or cool from what I saw in like, you know, art that I looked at, popular culture and just kind of added in there. And as I did it, I started realizing things also, like I, I tried to be a better painter at one point because Peter Sheldahl, do you know Peter Sheldahl, the, um, the art critic? He actually came in to give a talk and I read his book, The Hydrogen Jukebox. And I was really happy. Here's like my whole like little like thing about Peter Sheldahl too. He was giving, he was giving his talk and all of a sudden he looked at me and I was so much bigger. And I, I used to lift weights only because people used to like uh, uh, attack me, beat me up for being like Asian. I like lived that whole life like that. My kids are tiny. We were tiny. So my brothers and I just like, we just lifted weights, got bigger, did martial arts. Anyways, 
Peter Sheldahl is giving a talk to the graduate students and all of a sudden he looks right at me and he goes, stops his talk and goes, some people build their bodies and some people build their minds. And people who build their bodies don't ever build their minds. And I'm thinking the guy's talking to me. Plus, I was actually thinking, well, we're in a Socratic nature of uh, educational system here for Western education. And so it's mind, body, spirit. I thought all that, but I kept my mouth shut. So he comes to the studios and he knocks on the door and I open the door and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm thinking too much. As soon as I open the door, he actually jumps back and goes, it's you, and runs away down the hall. And I was like, Peter, Mr. Sheldahl, I read your book. It's this whole thing where all these art critics at the time, and this is like the 90s, told me that my work wasn't in fashion and that my skill level wasn't what people wanted to see. And it was mostly like older white men. And I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying that's really what happened. And so I started trying to be a better painter and I love Van der Weyden. So I started painting just women on flat backgrounds and those actually sold, sold really well. Like I put those out there, they'd sell. But I was giving a lecture one day and this woman just, you know, castigated me and said, you are so sexist and misogynist. Your pictures are like, you know, objectifying women. And I'm in the middle of the lecture and it's true. I said, I said, you know what, in a patriarchal society, when I'm making imagery that objectifies women, it is absolutely, you know, like uh, misogynistic and part of that whole world process. I said, but you watching this have forgotten that I'm actually a Chinese man in America painting images of white women as the most beautiful thing. And so actually in that realm, it's also of me being in this culture and changing to the part where I'm looking at Western artwork. And then I actually said, and I married a white woman and I have half Chinese, half white kids. So I'm a traitor of my own race. I was like, which one of those are true? Or am I just looking at what I think is beautiful at this moment from my, from my life here and I'm painting it. And I think all of that's true. So really in a lot of ways, that question that you're, or that idea that you're putting out there, I think your whole life is all about your artwork and your expression. And then you do it and you don't even know why you're doing it sometimes. And only in reflection later, when you look back, do you realize what's going on? So I think that expression is so pure or, 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 you know, like maybe subconscious in some ways. And so I look back at my work and I think I did that. And then I have time to think about it. Yeah, I think um, I have a similar, uh, process <laughs> with like imagery it starts off a little bit um what do i want to paint or what do i want to see what do i want to render um and a lot of for me moving away from doing because uh, i used to do pretty much almost exclusively like portraiture um uh, but taking those elements and trying to expand this uh arsenal of things that i want to be able to do and like it started out with like what's the most like what are these like kind of challenging things that I can do to break out of what feels kind of like a stagnant place um and then that kind of builds you're like okay there's this thing and then the you start uh, for me I start sort of just collecting images and things around me or like going on walks taking pictures of stuff that I see things that are like oh that's like an interesting shape and all of those unintentionally collage into something that um they all go together in a very weird way but maybe it doesn't totally make sense but it's very instinctual um i don't plan anything out um i don't sit down and like do thumbnails ever i don't know how anybody else is but i'm not a thumbnailer um as terrible as that is as like an art school student um it's just not for me i like to just work more instinctively and say like these things can just sort of like i start with a color or i start with a an object and then kind of like explodes out from there yeah and i think it's really interesting to see where something starts and something uh ends up right and i think you know cliff what you were saying earlier i think that at the heart of it it's when we can connect to, to what we truly either feel we have to say or need to say um or 
connect to the right way to say anything, you know, um, even if you're not trying to say something specific, it's just finding that right vehicle. That's when I think that that real connection that we talked about earlier, that's when that has the opportunity to happen. Um, and I think that that's a really interesting thing when that can happen, a very meaningful thing too, personally, for sure. And uh, just to just second what you're saying about connections here, um, my process, it, it always starts with a reference. And I have a, I have a love-hate uh, relationship with references um, just because I feel, you know, so intimate and I feel that, you know, the things that I do reference, I have, uh, I really resonate with these things. And sometimes that's, that's really hard to separate from when you're going into the studio and making your own, your own, your own you know, your own artwork. It's, I have a love-hate relationship with it because it feels like you're having a conversation with what you're referring to. But it also, it feels bad when you look at it and then you look at the reference and it's like, this looks a little too close to that, right? But the, the whole point of it was, I guess for me, being that I've only been painting for five years, I don't necessarily feel guilty for stealing ideas because I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand some of the, the processes, some of the, you know, the movements or the way that the paint is applied, you know, whether it be from a paintbrush or a palette knife. Um, so I'll take something and I'll absorb it and then I'll turn around and flip it a little bit and make it my own. And that sucks sometimes because it's like, I, I don't want to be like the guy who's copying, but it's, it's like, what I was saying is, is like this connection when you feel like it resonates with you, it's really hard to escape that. Um, and uh, like, at least specifically with these works too, like the idea uh, to use the burlap came from uh, another great abstract expressionist. His name is uh, Spencer Russell Lewis. Uh, he paints really large scale jute, you know, burlap paintings. And I was like, I want to use some of that. I want to see how that works. Um, so that's, that's kind of like my process. And, and I think, you know, that that is even said when, because uh, I have drawings of sneakers as well. You know, I'll take like, a uh, very classic sneaker. And I was like, okay, what can I do to switch this around and make it my own sneaker, right? Um, so I, I think I think that everything, I think that most great things uh, come from a reference point. And I think that, um, you know, that's a big thing with, with us as humans is that we we take something and we just want to respond to it because we all want to be a part of something. So that that is, that's my whole process when I'm in the studio. And, and I guess, uh, that was an, another reason why I took this hiatus as well is because I didn't want to study. I was like, I, I need to go away from doing studies so that when I go back and pick up the paintbrush, it's all me. Um, so that's a little bit about my, my uh, process. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, Deshaun, what you kind of described uh, about using references and things like that, I mean, I mean, to me, that kind of just describes part of the creative process in general, you know, like you're always absorbing things that always comes out onto, you know, whatever surface you're working on, you know, whether it's a, a direct thing or an indirect thing, you know, that's, um, that's how art or anything really kind of builds upon itself and, and becomes something new as we have to kind of look to the past while, while also looking at the future, kind of digest things and, you know, process them in our own ways and, have them come out onto the, the canvas in this case. So, yeah. Um, and uh, does anyone, I guess, <clears throat> to kind of wrap it up, because I feel like we, I, I could personally just talk about this all night long. I think we've gotten really interesting uh, territories here and there's there's so much to, um, to delve into, um, but I guess um, any, does anyone have questions, any of the artists have any questions for any of the other artists, first of all? And then I guess any uh, any closing thoughts or interesting observations about uh, well about painting life in general. I mean, we'll we'll open it wide up. I I actually have a question for Brad. Oh. <laughs> um, as a curator and also a painter, what drew you to? Um, wanting to assemble this group of artists, which I think um, I definitely have to commend you. I think it really works. Uh, it's very interesting. It's very dynamic. It's very, you know, it all just works together. Um, but you as a curator, I think, you know, artists, we have to be everything. We have to be the, the maker, the curator, the, you know, the researcher, all of that. 
and you're all of that too, but you had to take a step back. So can you talk a little bit about assembling this show for us? I yeah, think that would be fun. Yeah, uh, well, so actually the, well, I, I'll, I'll go further back and just say that my approach to curating and installing exhibitions as well comes directly from my approach to painting. Uh, it's a very intuitive process, um, which relies heavily on uh, improvisation, but also on my background. I have an earlier background in graphic design, very small, small background in it, but um, small knowledge uh, in graphic design. But anyway, the skills are there. And I think I kind of rely on this um, uh, tapping into on a subconscious level of design. So that's like the way I think about not only the arrangement on the wall, but also in the back of my mind, somehow I'm keeping track of, um, well, will this look good with this? Will this be too similar? Oh, these lines here look just like the lines of someone else's painting, even though they're totally different styles. So, so there's, there's that. And then with the idea for the show, um, you know, in, in the past, I've come up with titles for exhibitions, which are very, uh, like maybe hard for people to understand. And they're even hard for me to explain to someone because I've gotten so far down my own rabbit hole and thinking about a very abstract idea that um, you just like, what is this even about anymore? It's interesting together on some level, but you don't know how to describe it to someone. So, um, so the idea for this show was like, I wanna have a show about painting. We're gonna call it Six Painters and there's gonna be six painters in the show and that's that. So um, that's like where the kernel of the show came from. And then from there, um, I'm trying to even think, some of the first people I had in mind, um, well, like, so we always have our open call, right? We have that on our website, people can submit artwork. So I, you know, we always reference the open call and uh, there were a few people who, um, you know, from the open call, like I, I think uh, Susan, you had submitted and, and we knew Susan's work from a previous show or two also. Um, but it kind of just builds organically. So I knew you know, um, Susan, I wanted to have her in the show. She was in a show in 2016 here called House and Home. Um, and, you know, she had this new work, which was really interesting. And so that was that was something that was there. And then Deshaun was in a show that we had in 2020 uh, called Figure Ground. And I just really liked the kind of lyrical uh, line work um in in his paintings and also just following on instagram and seeing things that were posted uh that he was posting um not only paintings but like images of him like running through the field with his painting in the background it was like just really interesting to me just like the other things that he was posting in relation to his paintings and then also his his photography that he mentioned too um but um so like i knew there was a great connection between susan and Deshaun, you know, some of the line work. And, and that's what Deshaun mentioned. I gave him a preview of some of the work that was in the show. Um, that was the, the paintings I was showing him, especially because I thought he'd really respond to that. Um, and then I think Anne also submitted to our open call. And I really liked the, the vibrant colors that she was using with the gouache paintings and the collaging um, and saw how that related to both of those artists, um, you know, color wise, but totally, totally different approach, totally different scale, um, everything, uh, very different. And, um, and then Cliff um, was in a show called Painters, Painters Painting Painters uh, in 2020, uh, beginning of the year, pre-pandemic. Actually, that show led us out of the, well, not out, no, that led us, in, <laughs> the end of that show led us into the pandemic. That's what I mean to say. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I've always, looking at Cliff's work, just always been amazed at the, um, the detail and uh, the wild wildness. I don't know how to say it. Uh, they're kind of wild, right? <laughs> There's guts. I'm looking at guts right now. <laughs> um, uh, so just um, knowing that that could fit into the show too, uh, on a level, uh, knowing I wanted to have something that was very uh, detail oriented. And, um, and also, you know, it's not like we're showing all of what's happening in painting, right? It's a very uh, narrow scope, but also has a lot of variety. So that was kind of on the back burner of the brain also. Um, and then, um, and then uh, who else am I? Oh, and then Rebecca uh, was in our small work show last year. And this was like, I think we had all five painters kind of um, selected. And then Rebecca's work came through um, and, and she ended up getting best in show uh, for the small work show. 
uh, picked by our juror uh, from last year, um, Rick Muto. And uh, just, I loved the painting, uh, the one specifically. And then I, I said to myself, I wanna buy this painting. And I said, I don't, I need another painting. Like I need a hole in the head. You know, I don't need any more paintings, but I, you know, you always need more paintings in your life. Um, but then uh, it was also my birthday and my parents bought me her painting for my birthday present, which was very kind of them. So uh, we live with uh, one of Rebecca's on our wall. And so then she was the, the sixth painter for six painters. Um, so that's kind of how the show went together. And then from there, it was just selecting work that seemed to relate, but also give enough variety for the, for the show. I don't um, think you really said anything about Suzanne's work. Oh God, no, I did. So Suzanne was the sixth painter. She's the one that asked this question also. Thank you, Cliff. Oh boy. So, <laughs> so, so Suzanne, um, I would like, so we have very uh, Rochester. I, I also, I wanted to kind of represent the region with this show a little bit, right? So we've got three people from Rochester, one person from Palmyra, and then we got one person all the way over here in Albany. And I'm like, where can we get a new painter that I haven't um, met before? We haven't shown at Main Street Arts. So I'm scouring the internet and I come across uh, Suzanne's um, work on a uh, art trail website for Ithaca. Um, wow. It was like that that was kind of the missing element I felt. Um, and I also I'll say this too, as a painter, I, I feel a personal affinity for each of your work. And I think that that also selfishly uh, is a way to kind of form this exhibition too. Because I think, you know, another painter curating a show of, of painters um, is exciting on multiple levels. So, um, so thank you. And sorry for suits for, for not mentioning Suzanne. I don't have a list. Well, I do have a list in front of me, but um, you know, on the spot, I'm sorry. Um, Whatever, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so I think, does that feel, uh, does anyone have any last, last, uh, last thoughts? You know, I just want to say that it was a great experience to see all of your work and to meet you. And I think that you putting this together, I mean, it's really, really about that. It was really thoughtful, but it was really kind of wonderful. And I think it's great to see that we kind of move from really young to, you know, like a little bit older and just that whole <laughs> I'm just putting myself old. in there. Just say old. I, no, no, I'm putting myself in there. I, I just got, you know what? I just got a discount on waste management by telling them. <laughs> <I did. laughs> but I want to, I want to echo. I want to jump in here while my internet's still working. Um, that I was really actually pleasantly surprised that it was so diverse. Um, that the rock, the the roster was both you know, generationally and racially diverse. And that really excited me because um, I guess also from coming from California, which is really pretty mixed and living here in Ithaca, which is pretty not, um, it, it, it's been like a culture shock for me to live in central New York. Um, and so it's been really refreshing and really fantastic to meet such a diverse group of artists. And I want to commend Brad for, I don't know if that was a conscious effort or if it just happened that way. Um, you don't have to disclose, but I, I do think that it was really um, fantastic. And I was pleasantly surprised also by um, the space and how welcoming everyone was. Um, I'm used to being the only non white person in the room. And um, I was so glad to see Cliff there <laughs> and Sean. And it was just like, oh, it, it, it felt like I have known you guys my whole life. So I just wanna say thanks for being so welcoming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I genuinely don't know because I don't leave my house. Don't think I would have ever met any of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is truly like it's impressive to see everybody's work and really like experience it especially in person like you were saying like everything about seeing these in, like paintings up close being able to really like absorb all of the texture and things that are like so lost with social media posts or you know just a simple photo um, it's it's really wonderful, and uh, I am super thrilled and excited that um, I got to be involved in this group, which has been so interesting and eclectic and energetic. 
Great. And I think I, and not to um, uh, ignore Facebook, we do have a, we do have a question. Um, so I'm going to ask that and then we can, um, you know, go back into kind of closing, closing things down. Um, so this question comes from Peter Montgomery uh, and Peter says such amazing stories of background and process, such thoughtful reflections from everyone. Question for Suzanne, you mentioned science fiction and fantasy. Uh, your paintings are wonderful. How do you balance the object paint aspect with the story slash scene slash atmosphere part? Your works read at many levels. You flip back and forth from the marks to the scene, from the plane to deeper in it. Uh, is that flow constant? The flow is constant, definitely. <laughs> um, I also um, choose to leave out a lot of really specific references um, because I feel like it gets in the way of the audience or the viewer being able to just walk in and experience it. So there, it's always a fight, um, the balance or the imbalance and, and riding that edge of the sword, so to say, um, to keep it interesting for me, but also to create this realm of the unknown, right? Um, most of the time, I don't really know what I'm doing when I, when I stop in and I just start working, but it's really, there, go, there comes a point where it all just starts coming together and um, it is like riding on the edge of a sword because at any moment it can just be crap. Um, but you've got to just be really focused and in the moment, in that painting, in that world, in your vision of what you're doing. And um, the moment you fall off that edge of the sword, you, you know it. And I'm sure all of you guys can understand that. Um, what I'm trying to obtain in the paintings, um, it's more of a mood of, of an idea of a mood. Um, so I don't have a lot of references. I don't like Rebecca, I don't do sketches, um, but I'm constantly thinking about the materials and the process and the action of actually painting. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot of baggage to carry when you walk into the studio, but, um, it all comes together somehow magically in the end. I wish there was a way that I could just say, take a pill or rub a, rub a salve on there and create a painting, but it's, um, it takes months sometimes for me to finish one painting. So it's, it's definitely a process. You've got to love the process. Whether it's painful or not. <laughs> Whether you're in a bad mood or not, but yeah. <laughs> Um, well, great. I think um, I think that that's pretty good uh, spot to end. I think paint paint uh, just because you got to. I mean, whether you're in a bad mood or not, whether it hurts or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just want to bring everyone back on, so we're all together. We can everyone sees each other, um, and just thank everyone that's that's in this uh, room here. Uh, thank you so much for not only being here tonight, but also for being in this show, uh, making such great work and, um, and for sharing, sharing this evening. Um, and if anyone, um, cause we didn't really share a lot of images uh, during this, this talk we do in a lot of our online talks we do, but this one we did a little bit different format, have more of a discussion. Um, so definitely if you can't get here to see the show in person, uh, well, it's behind me, um, but also you can go to our website, mainstreetartcs.org. Um, you can go to our exhibitions page and find this exhibition here, uh, Six Painters. You can see um, images of, of the work. Uh, you can see images from the exhibition on Flickr. Um, and also, uh, if you can, please come see the show in person. Uh, it's been said multiple times tonight. It's worth seeing in person. Uh, definitely a much more enjoyable experience. It's enjoyable to see virtually, but it's much more enjoyable in person. So please uh, come. The show will go through um, the end of the day on September 1st, which is a Thursday. So please be sure to uh, to get here. We are open Tuesday and Wednesday, 11 to 3, and Thursday through Saturday, 11 to 6. Um, so uh, thanks again, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, we'll, we'll hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.